Hi, I'm Dan Garcia, teaching professor from UC Berkeley. I'm humbled to have been honored with an ACM Distinguished Speaker and an ACM Distinguished Educator Award. Today I have the great pleasure of interviewing my good friend Brett Becker from the University College Dublin in Ireland, who's doing a fellowship with the National Forum for the Enhancement of Teaching and Learning in Higher Education. His fellowship is Teaching and Learning for the New Era of Digital Innovation. And this is really important because computing has affected our society in so many ways. Um, it's, just, it's affected how people spend their leisure time, uh, passing time in Facebook or doom scrolling or, or, or watching videos or making videos or creating. It's affected how folks access their health care. Um, it's affected how we, you know, how we produce and watch our movies, all the digital assets that are now being part of every single uh, you know, high, high end summer blockbuster. It's, it's affected um, our, our, our way our cars are driving on the roads and our safety. Uh, in just so many ways, computing has affected our lives. And in terms of thinking about education, computing really is just kind of cracking the nut to affect education in a positive way. And I think I'm excited to hear some of the things that you've been thinking about, um, Brett. So in a nutshell, what's your research about? Thanks a million, Dan. It's, it's really good to be here with you. Um, this research is about teaching and learning for the next era of digital innovation. It explores the digital demands on and needs of a range of disciplines including challenges and opportunities presented by digital innovation. Ultimately, the goal is to kickstart initiatives to help Ireland produce graduates in the coming decade who are best prepared for the digital world that they're gonna enter regardless of their discipline. Um, by definition, this is a continuous process really driven by the constantly accelerating pace of innovation. And this research will culminate in a professional development course for educators from any discipline aimed at helping them be better positioned to foster the skills, knowledge, and competencies to deal with realities such as cloud computing, big data, the internet of things, and of course, artificial intelligence. Um, these innovations are going to continue to transform the, the teaching and learning of all disciplines. So that's really what this is about. It's an exciting sure. time. I, I certainly agree that <laughs> this is a new era in this, and those, those, uh, those particular subtopics of computer science are certainly going to impact education as well as our society in many ways. Um, what prompted you to choose this topic for your fellowship research? Well, I'm a computer scientist and my research area is computing education. And I actively research the needs of computing students for my day job, so to speak. And often that does involve looking at non-computing students, but normally in computing courses. So I have been aware that there are digital technologies, of course, impacting many students in disciplines outside of computing. And I find these, these areas to be really context rich. And also they're, they're, often that's where there's the most evidence for digital innovation truly shaping society. Um, you said there, you know, these technologies are transforming everything we do, but it's the what we do that's really interesting, right? The, the technology changes the way we watch films, but we still watch films. So I wanted to get to the heart of of those doing things. And um, many disciplines, of course, have been completely revolutionized by these innovations. Um, for instance, geology has been transformed by um, geographic information systems. Architecture has been similarly revolutionized by building information modeling. However, if you look a little closer, the, the drivers of and the realities of these changes in various disciplines are quite distinct. And I find this really exciting. Um, I mean, it's just really exciting that there are so many disciplines out there that have been changed so much, but there's also disciplines that, that have yet to really experience that, you know, to be over the hump, so to speak, and to really experience that um, revolutionary change. 
And, and the interesting thing about, you know, why some disciplines haven't adopted or haven't embraced the, di the digital transformation is it's, it's, it's a question of, A, there might be some pushback from folks who said, you know, this is the way we've done it for years and don't want to, don't want to adopt a new way. And it also might just, it might not lend itself as easily, you know, as it is to can we say, can teaching STEM courses with a little computing that might change something that may be changing, teaching social science courses. But I think there's transformation possibilities all across the board. Um, so wh why does this topic matter to those who learn, teach, and, and lead across the higher education community? Well, uh, it's, I mean, it's important. And, and it matters because it's hard to find disciplines where digital innovation hasn't had a, a significant impact on teaching and learning. However, these impacts vary greatly. And like I've kind of hinted at, I think in many cases, we're really just at the cusp of a, an even greater change. Um, I mean, the pace of innovation is compounding. It shows no sign of slowing. It's certainly accelerating. And this is going to impact the teaching and learning of all disciplines in both pretty obvious and straightforward ways, as well as some, some you know, more specific ways. Um, if you look for a specific example, uh, digital innovation is creating new disciplines and new specialties. So that's maybe kind of obvious. Um, for instance, bioinformatics is a relatively young discipline that has benefited greatly I mean, arguably, it's been made possible by digital innovation. Um, if you look at law, software copyright law is a relatively new specialty within the discipline of law. But as, as well, I mean, it's not just about those obvious changes. Um, I find it really exciting that if we stick with law as an example, you can't really argue with with saying that all law graduates will be the most capable and the most competitive, regardless of their specialty, if they have a command of the, the digital technologies that are relevant to law. And I think additionally, digital innovation, um, it's gonna also affect more general aspects of teaching and learning across the disciplines. Um, for instance, mastery learning and personalized tutoring and mentoring they're both known to have positive effects on all teaching and learning, regardless of the discipline. And the bottleneck there has historically been resources, most often human and economic resources intertwined. But digital technologies are becoming available that will help us overcome these barriers, freeing up educators' time to be dedicated to aspects of their profession that that absolutely require that human input and that human touch. Um, and particularly artificial intelligence applications are, are really well poised to help educators and students um, and provide, for instance, personalized programs of learning. And these are becoming more economical and effective, uh, but in many cases, they've yet to really take hold. You know, it's really interesting. You're you're preaching to this this man's choir because I'm <laughs> I'm trying to launch in the in the fall of 2022 uh, a course at UC Berkeley for the, for the first time. We'll give only A's, and the idea is we'll hmm. use mastery learning to say however long it takes for you to reach an A level. If you're willing to work for it, you can get the A. And it might take you two semesters, but you'll just get an internal incomplete between the semesters. And when you finally reach A level, you'll get the A. So I'm hoping to get some press around this to see if we can actually finally take this idea of mastery learning and, and, and embody it in, in an actual course. That's great. But, but let's, let's go back a little bit. Um, what, what do we know about this topic from, from previous literature? Well, if we look at digital technology in general, um, there's a few main avenues in, in the literature that are really quite distinct. Um, the first is, for instance, educational technology tools that we use in the classroom to help teaching and learning, right? So the pandemic really made this obvious with Zoom and, and different tools to kind of do the same things, but differently. Um, the second is more broad brush digital literacy that's generally beneficial for all students and graduates. That's been with us for some time, right? Digitally literate graduates, that's a good thing. Um, but both of these really, they often lack disciplinary context. And that's where I'm focused is where these innovations have discipline specific impact. So for instance, what 
digital knowledge, skills, competencies do earth science graduates need to be the best professionals that they can be? And there's not a large um, coherent body of work available on this front, at least not from a, a multidisciplinary point of view where lessons can be learned by educators in disparate disciplines. Much of the work is siloed within discipline specific venues and communities, but that's not to say that these disciplines don't have lessons that could be useful to those in other disciplines. There's a lot of really exciting work out there, but bringing it together and making it useful to others, making it useful to as many people as possible is a bit challenging because you have to cross those disciplinary lines. And, and we all know that that's, that's a, a challenging thing to do in most cases. Sure. And, and it also, it takes cross-disciplinary teams as you're rethinking the course. If you're saying, what do earth science graduates need? You can't just have CS people come in from the outside and say, here's what you need. You say, well, here's our tools we can provide. And the earth science people can, can decide, can also be, you know, learn what those tools are and say, oh, I could use that in this particular case. So it really does help to have a team approach in terms of redesign of education. How, how did you go about the research? Um, one of the main avenues was conducting dozens of interviews with Irish third level educators, including uh, disciplines from archaeology to zoology, as I like to say, but but also literally um, at, a, at as many institutions as possible. And these interviews covered uh, various angles, including digital terminology, which I found to be really uh, challenging, um, disciplinary impacts, current practices the different uh, drivers behind the demands for technology in various disciplines. And it also looked at their current challenges and future prospects. Um, it, was, it was interesting. I had the opportunity to see a lot of innovations in action. Uh, for instance, I, I went to an equestrian center and saw kinematic software in, in how uh, equestrian studies people use uh, those tools. And I looked at uh, how, for instance, uh, ship bridge simulators were used in nautical science. So it's there's really, really interesting uh, uses of technology out there in various disciplines. And like I said before, it's, it's about, you know, what has someone done in discipline X that, that people in discipline Y may be able to benefit from. So, um, on that, on that topic, a, a main output of this fellowship will be a, an open professional development course. And that's intended to provide a mechanism where groups of educators from any and all disciplines can learn about the, the impact and practices and solutions uh, provided by digital innovation in other disciplines and to allow for the, the cross-pollination of ideas and, and experiences. I, I love that idea. It's almost like it's, it's a play, it's a sharing of best practices in some, some sense. It's like a watering hole where, you know, earth science does something innovative and then chemistry says, hey, I want to do that. That was really neat. And it doesn't necessarily have to be limited to earth science. Let me borrow that tool and uh, that idea. That's great. But well, this is so exciting. What are some of the key initial findings from your research? I, I think an important initial finding, and, and this is still ongoing, but definitely an initial finding uh, of this research has been just how differently various disciplines have experienced digital innovation so far. The demand for digital skills comes from different angles, from different stakeholders in dis different disciplines. For some, industry really has been providing that drive and demand for others, um, regulatory demands. So in architecture, for instance, they're really driven by regulation and, and they have to be compliant. So, you know, that drives that demand. Um, for others, it can be student led, particularly in the arts. A lot, a lot of times the students want to do cool, creative stuff with technology. Um, and the way that, that those tools and innovations are used, um, it also varies really uh, between the disciplines and the impacts uh, of innovation on teaching and learning, they're also just as diverse. Some disciplines have had their practices revolutionized by digital innovation. Um, and so although this kind of diversity may seem obvious, um, the, the implications are, are extremely important, I think. 
the present state of digital innovation and teaching and learning, I think, consists of three observations for me. Um, first, some disciplines have been impacted more by digital innovation than others. And that reveals a, a disciplinary digital innovation gap, if you will. And second, the pace of digital innovation is accelerating. So the disciplines that have uh, embraced digital innovation are likely forging ahead faster than others. And, and this is a third observation that looking to the future, this suggests that there exists a disciplinary digital innovation gap that will grow if those disciplines struggling with change um, don't overcome the, the challenges that they face. Right. You know, we talked about not every not every discipline decides to embrace <laughs> computing to transform its education and its practice. So what what actually, if anything, surprised you by this research? I was surprised again by that variety. Um, it's it's really interesting how different disciplines have adapted and how some have been kind of thrown into change and others have been a little more, um, I don't want to say hesitant, but, you know, just the drive hasn't been there or the demand hasn't been there or the resources to capitalize on digital innovation hasn't been there for whatever reason. Um, so, I mean, I, I definitely learned if you look somewhere where you think that digital innovation should be really, really prevalent, it may not be and, and vice versa. In fact, many of the most interesting disciplines that I ventured into uh, from a digital innovation point of view were arguably quite far from STEM. Uh, often in the arts, for instance, one may not think that that theater, music, various performing arts haven't been impacted uh, or that impacted by digital innovation. But many of these disciplines really have and in, in really fascinating ways. Um, for instance, people in theater are are questioning what does it mean to be live? And, and what does technologically mediated live performance mean for audiences and for performers? So it's really interesting stuff. It's always fascinating to see some of the most creative people are on the cusp doing some just wonderful, you know, new media. There's the whole phrase of new media just says that there are performance art takes on many different dimensions when you bring in computing. You know, it can be as I walk through the space with my body, the sound is changing. There's some just really wonderful interactive exhibitions that you can you can have in some of these uh, museums that just let you explore the space where very creative people are bringing computing and the performance art and kind of interactive space. So things rather than being passive are now interactive in ways that they haven't been before. Um, Kind of virtual reality is like that. You're going to be in a movie. You'll actually be in, you put a headset on, and you'll be in the movie. You know, a, a bull comes at you and you'll feel, you know, you'll feel viscerally what it feels like to have a bull charge at you and then be stopped at the last second or something. Um, what, hey, this is fascinating to me, really interesting. What, what do your uh, initial findings mean for higher education policy and practice? That's a great question. Um, the, the rich and diverse digital landscapes that exist within all of these different disciplines really present challenges and opportunities at the disciplinary, institutional, and national levels. So there is there are going to be policy and, and practice implications. And I think that's kind of putting them at those different levels might help. Um, regardless, these challenges will only be overcome and the opportunities are only going to be realized through some sort of a, an awareness of these interconnected landscapes. Um, disciplines need to cope with their specific needs and capabilities. And really importantly, they, of course, need to maintain their core identities and missions. Institutions, uh, most of which these days are inherently multidisciplinary, need to, to really understand the landscapes within their walls and how they combine to form an institutional landscape. And then if we go up another level nationally, various institutions need to effectively work, I think, in unison to present a coherent national digital landscape and including future-focused plans. Um, I Only then, really, I think, 
can policy be crafted that that will truly enable barriers to be overcome and for opportunities to be realized. And a lot of this goes back to this diversity that I keep talking about in the, the teaching and learning practices of various disciplines. Um, these two have to be managed. Funding is important, um, but getting funding where it needs to be is often difficult. And awareness and knowledge are, are paramount, obviously. Without them, you don't if you, even if you have funding, you don't have anything to do. Um, so it's, again, it's about having disciplinary experts um, being aware of the potentially transformative innovations that are just, just a, you know, on the horizon um, and, and making sure that they have the resources and abilities and agility to make the best use of those innovations. And I think that looking forward, um, there's one area that really needs to be watched by everyone, and that one is artificial intelligence. Education is, from many angles, notoriously slow to change. I think we started off with a little note of that earlier. Um, and the, prolifer the proliferation of AI technology in society has been so far uh, presently pretty much dictated by the economics and potential for immediate impact. So this means that industry, um, mass market consumer products, that's where we're seeing the AI uh, right now, right? Tesla. Um, but as innovation drives on and costs come down, I think that areas such as education, where the returns are often measured over years and decades, will sooner than later and possibly sooner than than most think right now, start to feel the real impact of things like artificial intelligence. And that's really important because the implications that AI can bring to education and specifically the, the innovation in practice and policies of teaching and learning really have truly revolutionary potential for all disciplines. But we need to be on our toes and be ready to make the most of that the, the at the first moment that we can brett what what a what a what a delightful way to to close this because you know when i do a lot of advising and when when students come to me and say what courses should i take i always say well there's lots of fun courses but definitely take ai <laughs> <laughs> ai just feels like the course that every single subdiscipline in fact even other computing disciplines are having AI plus that. You know, I, I got my PhD in graphics, and now graphics really at Berkeley is graphics plus AI. You know, there's architecture, but there's architecture plus AI. That's really a you know, let's build. That's the exciting. Um, that that that's the. It's bringing new life. It's breathing new life into many of these fields because now there's new hardware to build to do the AI and the neural nets faster. It's really interesting. Um, I also I love your 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 overall summary of how to transform higher education because certainly funding is important, but it has to also be grassroots. I'm I'm reading I'm doing um, a reading group about the history of civil rights, and it, you can't just from the national level make a rule and then have all of these you know folks on the ground not believe in civil rights. So you have to kind of somehow make them believe in it. So there's a lot of analogies I'm seeing here of how do you get people to buy into it. You know, yes, there's money and grants, and let's have a thousand points of light and an opportunities to share best practices across the disciplines. As you know, earth science does something transformative. Let's make sure other disciplines know about that in maybe a yearly or you know monthly or something conference or calls. Um, but it also has to be from bottom up. It has to be the departments themselves, the disciplines themselves have to say, wow, what an opportunity. Not only is there free money to grab onto, but let's, I have some vision. Let's get some visionary people forward to put those grants forward to see if, if that money available from the, from the top can transform the discipline. And then let's quickly share that with other disciplines. And let's look around ourselves and see what, you know, chemistry is looking at, whatever science is doing, and say, yeah, let's borrow that tool. And what's nice about computer science is abstraction. Maybe you can, maybe, you know, folks can build tools that are generalizable and can be used across all disciplines rather than, well, I'm going to build a tool only for earth science. No, if I build a mastery learning tool, it could be used by many disciplines. So I think there's a lot of potential to take what we know with computer science. But again, the key is you've got to have this be a, a partnership. This has to be computer scientists on one side of the, on one side of the aisle, the discipline specific experts, the, the real visionary folks on the other side of the aisle coming together to, 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 to make the, 
the best uh, the best higher education experience and the best um, not not just actually the education of it, but also transforming you know what architects do. Period. You know, transforming the discipline itself. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that a lot of times it's the grunge work. Like computing can bring in and and lift you up rather than you know remove your jobs as a where you know uh, no there's no manufacturing jobs because robots are doing them all. But yeah. think about architecture. Think about architecture. I don't know, 100 years ago before computing. All of the calculations of whether the building can maintain the stresses and strains are done by hand. And now you put in a CAD model and you run software and it does it for you. It says, oh, you know what? This cantilever won't be able to support if everybody decides to have a, you know, a, a, a party on the deck or something. So all, a lot of times computing can now elevate what you do and, and allow you to be more creative because it does the, the grunge work for you. So it's really fascinating. Ask the folks at Pixar if they could, you know, if someone trying to sketch, think about Snow White, right? Trying to sketch how a dress actually moves uh, when you're making Snow White 70 years ago. Now you just put a dress, you put some physics on it, and then how, how it renders is automatically done. So all of that work of trying to figure out how, how to do that is now something that computer can do for you and can allow the animators and can allow the creative people to be much more creative at a higher level. So computing is yep. certainly a transformation in so many ways. Yeah, um, and I think that's really important. You know, it's it's not going to take jobs. I don't think it's 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 not going to you know remove work from our plate and leave us with nothing to do. It's it it lets us do more better right yeah you know yeah at, at a higher level of abstraction if you want to use the, the phrase like you know you were doing this lower level thing and now the computer can do it for you now what would you do um you know what would you do um even the folks at you know at amazon this big this big company that's doing this the folks who used to do kind of a lot of men you know have you know strain injuries because and now that's done by by computers that's done by robots well now what what, is, what should they do well they're doing a higher level work so it actually does help in most cases it does help uh folks elevate what they're doing and, and elevate their their careers it's wonderful brett i want to thank you for your time what a fascinating conversation and i also want to thank you for doing this work this is really important work uh in terms of it's it's really like looking at the the global space of education and digital technologies and how, how can we improve it and how can how can ireland uh make a difference and and, and actually there's almost like a level above it like how can once they make a difference how can other countries learn what ireland's going to be doing so i think there's there's a lot of potential to be to, to share best practices with us but again thank you for the time and thank you for for the work that you're doing thanks very much dan it was a pleasure talking to you today